Hello and welcome to another budget and leg it video. Now we're going to be doing the EGR valve and as you can see, yes, it's a lot cleaner. I've done a video on this new cleaning product, uh, Prestige, and as you can see, it's cleaner, so it doesn't get me dirty. And we know we've got a broken wire, but I just want to check that the EGR valve is working. So I'm going to use my EGR valve tester slash cleaner from Sykes and we're just going to plug it in and we can just actuate it here and it clicks over backwards and forwards it will clean it but it will also test to see if it's working because there's no point going any further until we naturally well we need to repair the wire but we also need to know is the EGR valve physically working because on our live date it was doing nothing but then we've got a broken wire so we won't expect it to be doing anything so that's what we're going to do first it's just quick and easy to do it especially with this EGR valve the connection is right there I have this connection that just plugs straight into it and I know in seconds and then we can uh, worry about the wire afterwards. Right, so we are plugged in and the EGR valve isn't shorted internally because if it was, the machine would actually make this noise. Um, can I do it one hand? There we go. It'll just beep at you if it's shorted internally. It isn't. So what we're going to do is we're going to press and hold the button and we're going to see if the EGR valve starts clicking. It does, but it isn't great. Nope, now it's stopped. You can see that the light is flashing, but that EGR valve isn't even clicking anymore. Uh, that EGR valve is either completely knackered, or most probably it's just completely caked full of crap. Um, that should be... <laughs> That should be clicking there. and a clicking where you hear clunk 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 you would really hear it clicking the, the machine is still sending um a power to it, as you can see it's still flashing um but it's not doing anything so what this machine's actually doing now if the e java was working it's technically cleaning it now you do have to be careful what it means by cleaning is it's actuating it in and out so if there's any loose crap it will remove it but yeah this EGR valve is just completely and utterly blocked that should be clicking I have showed this tool before it should be clicking uh, really good to the point where you can physically hear it it's not doing that so I've got to now ring the customer ask I've got to ask him what he wants me to do does he want me to take this out does he want me to clean it does he want to get a new one uh, it's entirely up to him I would say from the feel of this it's just completely bagged um, the machine has now stopped let's just activate it again that is now activating and again just absolutely nothing what we can try is just give it a few love taps by the EGR valve is clicking away well it's not clicking away but the machine is You don't want to hit it hard, but it can sometimes. No, absolutely nothing. Absolutely nothing. It was trying at the beginning. Hopefully the camera caught the little bit of noise it was doing. And after that, it's just completely shot. So it's now time to ring the customer. We know we've got a broken wire and also a dodgy EGR valve. It might be able to be saved, but we're going to see what he says. Right. Actually, now I've pressed this machine a few times and listen. It is actually cleaning the EGR valve. And what I mean by that is it's making it move. That wasn't clicking before. Just wait for the traffic to go past and hopefully you'll hear it. And now the wind picks up, it's typical. I'm gonna wait for the traffic to die down and the wind pick up, but I can actually hear that now. It's getting better and better. Um, so what that means is we can clean this. Uh, this machine might not clean it enough to be fair because it could be completely caked, but it is actually actuating now. I can feel it pulsing. I can hear it. So it's always good with this just to, you know, 
give it a load of presses just for it to kind of hopefully maybe sort something out before you actually um, completely say an EJR valve is buggered. Um, there you go. Hopefully you can hear that. And now the machine is actually gone green. It actually went green, which means it was, it was okay before it went red. So let's just try it one more time. Hold it for a few seconds. Release. So the few little love taps, the fact that I kept pressing it, has it's now it's moving it's still not sounding proper it should be click 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 i should be able to hear a lot better click but we are moving so that means we can clean it it's a two-piece egr valve so the kind of the solenoid part and the egr valve are separate and normally the problem is with these is they tend to break as you try and take them out because you can see where my finger is here. This is the solenoid part and then this part, you can just see the line. Hopefully the camera is picking up there. You can just see the line. That's the EGR valve part and they will kind of separate. But the problem is to get this second part out it normally breaks. Um, so you have to be very careful because your EGR valve could be okay but you could physically break it getting it out. So just bear that in mind. I'm gonna see what the customer wants me to do. Right, before we worry about the EDR valve side of things, because whether the customer wants to try and clean this or get a new one, we still need to repair the wire. So whichever one we do, we can you know, make sure the EDR valve is working. But unfortunately, as you can see, the wire is completely broken right, there's just no way I can solder that on and there's not enough wire anyway. You know, the wire is just completely gone. And like I said before, always the best thing to do is keep all your wiring looms and absolutely everything. So I've got the plug off the other wiring loom. Now I'm not gonna cut all these wires because that's absolutely pointless. It's putting more connections in and I just, I'm just not gonna do it. So I'm gonna de-pin this one, I've got plenty of wire here as you can see. So we need pin number one. I'm gonna basically, inside there, you can just see that pink clip. I'm gonna remove that pink clip, de-pin number one, which is there, remove all this whole wire, and then that gives me, I can actually then uh, solder this wire and just push the pin down into here so i'm using the original connection but obviously again i have to remove that pink uh clip there which holds the pins in and once i've done that we can actually solder this and then we can worry about the EGR valve but at least we'll have um at least we'll have an actual uh you know working socket and then we can worry about that afterwards lovely and this is obviously part three of the video. So if you want to see how we got to all this, you need to watch parts one and two because we've done other connections for the um, pressure sensor, fuel pressure sensor for the uh, temperature sensor and all sorts. There's loads and loads of problems with this van, but we're not doing them all because it's just not going to be worth it. So we're just getting it running for him, uh, for him to go to Bulgaria. Sorted. So all you do is you get a screwdriver in there and you pop this pink clip out. It comes out the side. Oh, I've just pushed it back in. Try and do this on camera. It is a bit awkward. And there we go. So that's the pin out. And now, depend on your connection, you might need to actually bend the pin has it. You can see, you can see where the clips are and you can see each side of it, there's a tiny little hole. And sometimes the, the pin has like a little uh, clip that you just have to bend back to slide out first. I'm not gonna be able to film that, but once I get it out, I'll show you where the clip was. And I've got a special kit for removing these, but you don't really need it. The kit just helps you. But anything small and thin, uh, yeah, I'm just waiting for it. And uh, it will get that pin out for you. This is the easy one, because this is on a bench. It's the one that's inside the vehicle is gonna be a nightmare. 
Right, so as you can see, no specialist tools. I've got a paper clip and I've just got some pliers. You'll see, I've, I haven't gone in the middle of the clip. I've gone on the outside where the two little uh, notches are cut out. You push it down, you feel a little bit of resistance. And then all you do is come underneath. Make sure you get the right wire. And there we go. We have deepened that connection. Now, what we've got to do, we've got to be very careful because you'll see, where is it? Right there where my finger is. Oh, gonna zoom in. You might not be able to see it. But you can just, you can see at the edge there. You see that little thing sticking out? What we need to do is, uh, we need to bend that back out before we stick it in the new one because otherwise it will just slide back out. These two little tabs, you can just see them there. Well, there's only one because sometimes they have two. Some, well, this one does actually have two, but there's only one sticking out. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna bend them two little tabs back out and that will just slide in the new connection and there we go. Again, I can't show you that on the, on the vehicle because it's gonna be difficult, but that's all you do. And in this particular case, I just use a paper clip. That's all I used. Lovely. But I can bet you now it won't be as easy taking it out, the one on the vehicle. All right, hopefully now, there you go. You can see them two little wings I've just pulled out, the two little tabs. Looks like it's about to fly away. I just got a blade underneath there, just a, a standing knife blade and just bent them out. But that now, once I, once I push it in, it'll push in and click. They push past the little lip and it means you can't push it down. It's like a barb on a hook. Um, that's exactly how they work. But as you can see, you need to go down the side of the pins, not in the middle of the pins, because all you're gonna do is open that up and destroy the pin. Right, as you can see, we've depinned it. They're a nightmare to get out because there's nothing to hold against because this is this is just broken at the tip. So what I did, I got a little pick from Top Tool. And uh, I just picked it out. And as you can see, we have now completely got that out. Lovely. Now bear in mind, you do need to get this the right way. Like put the little wings, do the wings go at the top or the side? Because that will make a huge difference. In this particular case, the wings go up and down. So if I'm looking at the connection here, the wings face up and the wings face down, not side to side. And you'll hear a nice click once you get in. Let me try and set the camera up so I can do all that in one shot. Now hopefully it stays there long enough for me to do this. So the little wings, oh, don't move. The little wings. Go up, push it in. There we go, hear that nice click. And now look, that won't come out. And it's in. Lovely, and the little uh, weather seal pack is still in there, which is very important. You can see that on it. And there we go, boom, sorted. Right, obviously, don't forget to put that little clip back in. That is important, so there's our wire. But look, look what I found. This is in a Nissan, and Look what it says. BW and Audi, Germany. Anyway, so now I've got to solder this onto that. Basically, sorted. Right, we are all back together. That's our repair done right here. And I've got to tidy up all the wires first and everything, but you can see the, uh, the oil and crap already kind of weeping out of it as I was um, actually, you know, controlling it. It, it, it is blocked. We're gonna have to, uh, you know, take it off, clean it, unblock it, unless the customer wants to stick a new one on. I'll leave that up to him. But I just wanted to put it all back just to see if we get anything different, just to start it up, see if we get that smoke initially, see if it revs up fine and all that. I think it's gonna be better, but it's just not gonna be 100% until we actually clean it. Lovely. All right, so let's start it. We'll give it a bit of a rev. Yeah, it's still not great. You can kind of, I don't know if it's coming through on camera, but it's spluttering as it's going up. And we've still got a bit of smoky coming out. But that doesn't matter. It is better, which is good. Right, as you can see, we're still getting that gunk splicking out and that was completely clean before. I'm going to clean it and I'm gonna clean up all these wires and we're gonna uh, see what it does because all these wires are still hanging out. I left this a bit long on purpose in case there was any more issue. It's just easier for the next person to come along 
and uh, I'll tidy up all them wires, get them all nice and neat, take that e jar valve out, clean it, put it back in, and then we'll finish off the video. I've done videos on how to clean e jar valves. I've done it with a sonic cleaner kind of before and after, so there's no point going into all that again. I'm just gonna clean it and see what we uh, see what we get. Sorted. Can you see that smoke? Yeah, you can see it there now. That's before cleaning. And hopefully you can get the hesitation in the throttle. There, hopefully you heard that. Da -da -da -da. So we're gonna see what it's like after cleaning. Sort it. Right, now after clean, I've just taken it for a quick spin and uh, let's just rev it up. I'll put the window down again and see if we can see any, uh, or hear anything. Perfect. Hopefully that's coming through on camera. That just revs so smoothly now. And when we look in the rear view mirror, no, uh, no smoke, no nothing. Sorted. So look, hope it helps. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Don't forget, links up here, links down below. But most importantly, don't forget, get your hands dirty. See you for the next one. Sorted!